So we recently acquired this old Datsun pickup truck. Uh, we had a fan that reached out to us and wondering if we were interested in buying it. Of course, it's strange, it's unique, and it's right up our alley. So mom and dad headed off to Oklahoma City to pick it up. Uh, now that we've got it back to the shop, we're just gonna dive in and see if we can get it up and running. Now when they picked up the truck, there wasn't a whole lot of backstory the gentleman had with it, of whether of when it was parked, or why it was parked, or even if it was running when they parked it. Uh, so me and dad are just gonna dive in now, see if we can get her up and running. Hopefully we can move this girl around the block under her own power. Small-town business owners Wyatt and Lance Bush came together to form Craven Customs, a father and son duo scavenging the web along with the Northeast Texas woods in search of rusty relics. While buying and building on a budget, they recreate and preserve hidden patina, giving each one a story of its own. Chasing their passion, they're giving the past a future, saving lost dreams one vehicle at a time. With help from God, these guys are turning rust. <laughs> not much of an engine, is it? No, for sure not. Well, the question is... Oh, yeah. She turns over. It's got to be the littlest <laughs> fan I've ever seen in my life. That's good. I'm about tired of the stuck engines. Me too. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. Right yeah, looks like somebody's done one ahead of us with their little gravity fed. Oh yeah. <laughs> tiller tank. Almost lost where I pulled the dipstick up out of. Pull to the max, and it's not bad looking. Yeah. Smell gassy or anything. No, nope, just oily. Now we got a radiator hose off the radiator for some reason. Golly, that thing's hard as a rock. Ain't no flex to it. <laughs> I don't know that we'll be able to get that back on there. Maybe they were draining it and trying to winterize it or something right. at some point. I don't know. Or maybe the radiator needs some work. Who knows? Well. Almost need the hood off to give us a little more light, don't we? Yeah, we can take that off and keep us from bumping our heads on it. See, knowing, knowing it's not locked up, that's a good start to, right. to start. Get a battery, get this hood off, and see if she'll turn over with the key. I guess it's got a key. I believe it did have one in it. Yeah, we got a key. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get this off. and. Dig in a little deeper, I guess. So this is actually a pretty cool little old truck. Uh, I believe it's a 65 model, judging by the grill right here. Uh, looks very similar to a 65. In 64, it would have had a square uh, actual turn signal running lamp right there. Uh, a lot of people will call these a Datsun 1200 because it's got the emblem of a Datsun 1200 on the side. But I believe they're actually just called a 320. Uh, of course, made in Japan, imported over here. This is a little 1200 cc engine, just a little bitty old four cylinder motor. Um, pretty basic. I mean, everything on it is like any other motor except a lot smaller. I mean, look at the size of that generator, alternator there. That thing's just a little bitty. So, uh, going around the truck, got some really cool mirrors here on the fender. I don't know if these are factory, but if they're not, they should have been. <laughs> it's got these uh, like West Coast style uh, side mirrors on it there too. We do have some damage along some of the sheet metal of the truck, a lot right here, like they've hung it on a stump or something maybe. Uh, inside the truck, pretty basic, very basic. We've got, we do have an emergency brake handle right here on the left hand side, not sure if that works. Highly doubt that the clutch and brakes are going to work. I did notice that it has some uh, 
hydraulic uh, slave cylinders for those. But on the actual odometer, it's showing 60, 65,000, I guess, 6,500. I can't really tell. It's hard to see in here, but yeah, pretty simple. Got a shifter on the floor there. We do have the key, so that's a good thing. Back here, to me, it's just a strange, this bed is very, very primitive for the front of the truck. And what kind of drives me crazy is how the bottom of it uh, doesn't match up with the, with the bottom of the cab, but your body lines match up perfect. So got our little cool tie downs if you wanted to tie down something in the bed. Very primitive fender wells back here. There was a couple spare tire wheels and tires. Does have a little bit of rust in the bed, but other than that, not a whole lot of rust around this truck. It was complete with the, the tailgate, you know, got two, <laughs> two sets of license plates here. And then that one there, the oldest one is dated back to from 69. So uh, that's a pretty old plate we've got on this thing. On this side of the truck, Pretty cool patina, I guess you'd call it, but once again, that bed just looks kind of kind of funky. The gentleman that we bought it off of had put new uh, new set of wheel or not wheels, but a new brand new set of tires on it, so we don't have to worry about the tires leaking down. They still got the stickers on them, so old six lug pattern there. Uh, once again, on this side, we've got a little bit of rocker damage down there. Looks like it's hung on something. I'm pretty sure that both doors open. Yeah. So not sure about the windows if they roll down, all that good stuff. Nothing really good inside here. Just got the you know, battery bracket that holds it down. We do have two of the, what looks like the original uh, hubcaps there. So that's good. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just try to dive into this engine. We noticed that there are some parts that have been kind of pulled loose of it. So I'm not really sure why on that, uh, but it is able to turn over. So most of the things we've been working on here lately, they've just been locked up solid. So this one turning over by hand is definitely a plus for us. We'll put a battery on it. Hopefully she'll turn over by a key, uh, get it getting a little spark to in the ignition, a little bit of gas, and hopefully she'll fire up and run on her own power. Hopefully this one will work straight off the charger, so it should be hot. No sparking, huh? No sparky. I guess I'll see if it does anything with the key real quick. What is that wire? Which one? The, the yellow one. I just want to make sure it wasn't touching nothing. Let me try it and see what it does. There. Yep. Nope. Nothing. Clicking or nothing, huh? Uh-uh. Can you reach that starter? That's yeah. Tap on it with something? Yeah, let me grab. Might just need a little tap. Mm -hmm. No. Hmm. Wonder if we're even getting juice to our ignition switch there. I don't know. Let's see. So we got our main battery wire that runs down there. Yeah, I see the wire that runs off the solenoid. It comes back. Looks like they've got a splice in it there. I bet we could probably yeah, we could jump it across with the just the trigger if we had to. That runs up here. Yeah, that wires ate up a little bit right yeah. there, but and I guess that goes to your voltage regulator there. Yes, it is strange looking, but so I wonder. Let me check this and just see if we're getting juice. It could have just been a bad connection, connection there. Let's see if we're getting any juice to that anyways. You wanna try it? Ready? Yeah. Nothing. 
Huh. It looks like our fuses are not blown, but kind of corroded up on the ends. It could just be a bad connection right. somewhere there. Lots of splices on this wiring, ain't there? Yeah. I think we'd be better off just try to, just to see if the starter is working or not, just jump it with the trigger thing. But you want to go ahead and pull these plugs out, though, before we get... Yeah, we'll kind of jumped the gun yeah. a little bit if it would have turned over anyway, so yeah. get some kind of Marvel mystery. I mean, we know it'll turn over, but they're still starting it out dry for you. Right. Yeah, let's get them plugs pulled, squirt some stuff down in there, and then I'll just try to bypass ignition just straight at the solenoid, I guess. Like a thirteen sixteenth. All right. Outside of the plugs don't look too bad. I don't know if you need a long or short extension, but I need a long one. Let's see what the inside of them look like. Oh, great! Oh, great. <laughs> it's off to a great start, huh? Think we can glue that back together? <laughs> Depends on how desperate we get, huh? That's right, yeah. Mm. Pretty carboned up. Well, yeah. that's a long, long old shank on the bottom sure of that is. thing. I wasn't expecting that. I won't give this one the kapowie whack I give that other one. Man, they're in there tight, though. Let me grab my wire brush. Won't do much good to clean that one. No, nah, I'm just seeing how bad it was. It was pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, they. But at least they ain't rusty. Right. I broke that one too. Okay. I should have a recall that, on that. Yeah. I think we should put new plugs in this, Dad. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I mean, we're... or at least the one piece. It looks like some have the two-piece plug, so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad for a little bit of a change to not see a bunch of rust. I'm gonna squirt some stuff down in there. Got to be little bitty old cylinders in there. Yeah, they can't be. <laughs> I don't know that it'd be the size of that can right there. Right, they gotta be little bitty. Yeah, you picture. Four mm -hmm. of them across there. They can't be much more than that. Uh, Want to try to hook it up down there? Yeah. Now that little. Yeah, it should be on that top shelf of that toolbox there. All of our stuff is top shelf today. Yeah. Not the greatest bite, but make sure it is out of gear. I guess give her a go. Everything looks to be out of the way. Except I me. To say you may, <laughs> may want to watch out. All right. Well, pretty quick, huh? Yep. That's good. The starter's working now. So we definitely got some kind of wiring issue back either probably it's going to be right here right i guess go ahead and hit it again go 
Go ahead. Go ahead. That one's a little wakish. Go ahead. Nothing. Oh, it came loose right there. No. <laughs> All right. That looks good. Let's keep going. That one may be a little, might be a valve that's not closing all the way or right. something, but I think it's got plenty of compression though to definitely run, that's for sure. So we're off to a pretty fair start here. I did break a couple of the spark plugs, but we we're gonna end up replacing those anyways. Uh, we've got it turning over, so we do have a good starter that we can work with. Now something is messed up in our wiring, I'm assuming right up in this area where it comes right off of the voltage regulator to our fuses and stuff. We're just not getting any power to the ignition switch apparently, so we're just jumping it across right at the solenoid with just our little trigger button here. Uh, but it is turning over. We got a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil in there to kind of help those rings uh, just moving at the beginning from them being dry. Uh, so now I guess we're going to go ahead and move on to the ignition part of this. This will have an old points and condenser set up, so we need to make sure that we've got good points, condenser, cool, all that stuff that will send fire to our spark plug. So uh, once we get dig into that, see what it looks like, we'll move on to the gas part of the, of the engine, and hopefully she'll be firing up for us. Let's go ahead and see if we're getting juice to this coil from that. I doubt we are from the switch in there. Okay. But it could just be not sending it to the starter. Ready? Yep. No. I mean, it moves a little bit, but it should be showing close to 12 volts. So I'm going to go ahead. I figured that. I think maybe if we can just get to see if we can get it to fire off and then we can come back and figure out the why the ignition switch ain't working. Just run a wire straight from our coil to our right. positive yeah. side here and we know that'll get it juiced down to the distributor. A little wire or a clamp or something. Came factory with a loose wire. <laughs> Guess I better check and make sure the wire's even any good. It's just laying in there when we took the hood off, so. Should be able to just. So, yeah. unless the points are closed. So it doesn't get up here, grab nothing out. That should give us 12 volts to our cool, so we're not worrying about that. I guess we'll go ahead and check the points and see what they look like. Don't look bad from here. I ain't there. I ain't super old, that's for sure, but who knows how. I just does not want to stay. Try to clean them real quick. I have seen a lot worse down in here. Let's see if they're even opening and closing right, I guess. Uh, might as well check and see if they're sparking. All right. All right, come loose down low. Actually pulled the wrong one off. <laughs> That's weird. Because I didn't do that when I just tried it, did it? Yeah, dude. Yes. It didn't look like it did a while ago, though. I wonder if I undo. It shouldn't make no difference, though, on that. Yeah, because it's got to pass through here. All right, go ahead. They're definitely opening and closing. They ain't sparking, though. But we're still sparking here. Something's grounding out. That looks like a newer wire put on that thing. I bet it's. 
And that's the one that runs down there too. Right, I just didn't see it laying against there. I didn't know if it had a bad spot. Huh. I'll bet it's grind, grounding out where it goes into the... I've had them before where they'll ground out on the distributor outside, you know, instead of going in through the points and stuff. Oh, that vacuum advance is, that whole distributor is cracked right there on that vacuum advanced. See? Oh yeah, I can see, see it back there. That ain't good. Nope. I don't know that that would keep it from sparking. Running. No, I mean, I don't know that that would keep it from running, but that's definitely going to be an issue for us. I was about to say we may have to end up pulling this distributor out, Dave, because it's at a funky spot down there. That wire you can't hardly see, Dave. And I mean, I can undo it, but you're not going to be able to tell right. what it's grounding on. So I bet we've got to pull that distributor out, anyways. So well, that may be. <laughs> it might be a good time to try to. See if there's something we can do with that or how bad it even is. I think that line is kind of what's, it's, it's broke pretty good. I think it will work though still. Hopefully. Be careful with it when we pull it out. Yeah, let's try to pull that out and see what's grounding out right there and then see if we can patch it or go with it, I guess. Right. We may have to find a new distributor, which may be near impossible. For this <laughs> it may thing. be easier to find a new truck. And that might be why they parked it, who knows? So we're down here on the distributor on this engine. Uh, the points and condenser don't look too terrible on here. Something seems to be grounding out though. Uh, when we hook our wire up to our cool, we'll get a, a spark, which will happen every time the points will, will open and close. But we're getting a consistent spark here and no spark at the point. So that means something's grounding out on this wire, just probably on the outside housing of the distributor. But where the vacuum advance runs off the side of this distributor, it's actually cracked what looks to be all the way around it. So we're going to try to see if we can get this distributor pulled out of here, check to see what might be grounding out, and see if there's some way of fixing where that vacuum advance is cracked there. So now that we've got this distributor pulled out of the truck, it was quite the chore to get it out of there. You guys can tell what we've got going on here. So this vacuum advance is actually part of this distributor housing here, and somehow it's been broken off at some point in time. Uh, with this being some kind of a cast material, there's really not a great way of fixing it. Uh, I figure we might get some kind of a JB weld or something to try to glue it back together and just hope for the best. But regardless, I don't think that this is going to keep this truck from running. But what we've got inside here is something is just grounding out before it gets to the points, allowing the points to spark the way they need to. So we'll just have to go over the wiring in this situation here, check everything out, figure out what's grounding out, put it back together, get it in the truck, and hopefully we'll get a good spark at our points then. So you can see where we've got it glued back together here best we could just with some two-part epoxy. We were actually grounding out, uh, this, this distributor had a couple different places with some plastic clips in it that was allowing it to ground out. So we just, out here, we made another little plastic style clip. And I think it should be fixing that problem now. If we can just get it put back in here without breaking anything again. Got it on top dead center here so we can keep our timing right. That should be it. Get it tightened back in. Let me see. that clamp's on there right. There we go. Snug her up, I guess, a little bit. Hard to see my mark I put on that distributor down there. So we're probably just gonna have to play with that and get it. Where it sounds good. Yeah, back in time. 
who knows if it was even right to begin with. <clears throat> Well, we want to hook the coal up and see what we got now. Yeah, I think so. See if they're sparking. Where'd our wire go that we were jumping across? With? There's a yellow one there. No sparky, so that's good. Well, at least so far. I guess try to bump it over and I'll watch down there at the point, see if they look like they're sparking. Yeah, I guess hook that back up. Get hooked up there. Clamps don't spread out too big on that side. at the coal for sure. Huh. Try it again. I see it jumping from this one to there. Yeah, I might have to put the uh, coal wire. Yeah. I was noticing on this I don't know if the aftermarket one comes that way, but they make it where if you needed to change the plugs, you're going to Plug, change yeah. the cap too. It's crazy. Or vice versa. I think the middle one here. All right. Do it again. I mean, I hear it, but I don't that's necessarily I I hear see it. I don't know. It's spinning so fast. This stuff to keep it from probably knock the fire out of me, but I just want to make sure it's not grounding out there. Ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still, yeah. Still jumping across there. Getting the best connection on that, but try. Still just losing it all across through there for some reason. Huh. I don't know why it would be doing that. Not unless that coil's got a crack in it or something in that. Maybe, yeah. That top there. We'll try it one more time and I can switch out the coil on it, I guess. It's still just jumping all out of that thing. Hmm. Crazy. And try to switch out coils on it real quick or we can. I mean it's not gonna be that hard. Cool. Yeah, that's a that's a definitely a quick change right there. Hopefully this is a, a good one. Tell them what we pulled it off of. No idea. I pulled it off of that table over there. Hmm. Like I said, it's, it's turning over so fast down there on the points, you can't even tell what it's really doing.
All right. Yeah, okay, great. That thing's got a lot of pop to it up there. Mm -hmm. We may just end up having to put it together and just see if it's shooting it to our spark plugs. I mean, it may be right. everything working like it should, but. Hmm, kind of quit the popping, but it's, I don't see it sparking down there. Go ahead. I don't really see it sparking at the points. I think maybe it's still grounding out somewhere. Bump it just a hair. You can even do it by hand. I think the points are open from what I can see. Okay, so yeah, I mean, they must be working because it's not sparking now. And that's what we were fighting before. It was just right, constantly. Constant. Try it again. Yeah, they are. It's it's kind of down below. Yeah, it's, it's down. It's a little lower though. It's kind of hard to see it. It's hard to see anyways because everything's in there all sideways. I'm gonna turn the lights off real quick and try to okay. take my GoPro and see if that maybe shows. Get an idea where you're gonna see it and then I'll All right, Ready? go for it. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it. Cool. So it's just kinda like looks like it's a little below with the point to where I was looking, but Sometimes they'll get a little twisted, but I bet it'll right. still send everything the way we need it to. Let's put the button back on and I guess try to see if it's... Let me clean this up just a little bit. If you want to clean that, that way we've... Because, of course, we don't have any new ignition parts here. You gonna grab one of those new plugs? Well, I try not to break this vacuum advance on. Try to put it in or just ground it somewhere? I'll just ground it somewhere. And... See if she sparks. I've seen a spark. Pretty good spark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thought I seen something spark down low, but I think it was just the. You want to go ahead and throw them back in there then? I think so. So we've got this thing mm. sparking now at the spark plugs. We did go ahead and pick up some new spark plugs. Uh, got that vacuum advance kind of glued back on there right now. It's holding up. So uh, the key thing was to get the point sparking, sending it to the spark plugs. We know we've got the spark plugs sparking now. We're just going to install them pour a little gas down this carburetor and see if she tries to pop off. Now we may have to go back on this distributor, turn it just a little bit just to make sure we've got it in time because we had to pull that out. Uh, we tried to make sure we had the, everything on marks, but sometimes stuff can get moved just a little bit. I don't think it's gonna take much at this point for it to try to pop off. And mm -hmm. hopefully, if it does, if there are some valves that ain't closing completely on that, they'll start working right. I'm getting that where the distributor where it wasn't grounded was a pretty yeah. big issue. I mean, it was small, but it was big. Right. Big problem. Yeah. Well, 
plug them in. Let's see what it does. I think this one, number one, should be right. I think this is number Let me one. Get these out of your way here, so we're not fighting those here in a minute. Maybe. Oh, I left that coal wire hooked up. Guess we'll get a little gas and try it out. I'll be ready to kill it in case it does some kind of crazy something. Ready? Yep. It may have been a while since it's had a drink. I would say probably so. Oops. Wouldn't think it'd take much though to make it pop off as little as this thing is. Right there at it, huh? Mm -hmm. I think we probably, uh, we, we may have had it too much gas the way okay. it was cranking up there. Let me just try to control the. I was going to try to control it. I'll just try it with my hand. <laughs> I wonder if there's got a choke inside it. Like it's a manual. Some kind of a. Uh, C for choke, right? Mm -hmm. Work? Mm -mm. It's not working. Well, it, well, this part is, but it's not. No. It went. All right, let's try it with it choked. Okay. Yeah, it was stuck. Okay. Ain't much here, but go ahead. She she's, runs. A, she's a runner, <laughs> huh? Yep, spitting all Just now noticed, it uh, says Snow King. I'm assuming that's some kind of a, I don't know, some kind of a snow equipment yeah, they pulled that thing else. off of. Snow blower maybe or something? Yeah. Let's put some gas down in the thing. Is it ran just gravity fed to it? Or? It goes to, I was looking while ago, it looks like it goes to the fuel pump. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's put some gas in it. I mean, not <laughs> kill ourselves on trying to run it by hand and just let it run off the fuel pump. Right. What's it smell like? Gas. <laughs> it actually smells like plastic, so that's good. I don't think that tank's been on there terribly long. Don't have a whole lot, but we've got enough to, probably about 20, 30 miles. Yeah. A little four cylinder. You're kind of curious at what the fuel mileage would be on this thing. One thing that I am concerned with though is it having both the, uh, a master cylinder that runs the clutch. Right. So not only are we probably not going to have any brakes, I don't think the clutch is going to work without us messing with that. But you never know. Show anything? I think we got about a cup in there. <laughs> Maybe. Try it. Man, I keep forgetting to unplug that. Yeah, it's a little, little spicy. Try it. You want to give it a little squirt of gas? We need our squirt bottle, don't we? Yeah, I don't know where it. I think it's in my truck. Ready? Yep. That quick? I still have it choked or? Yeah, it's still choked. Yeah. I don't hear it. If it'll crank, I'll get inside here and just try to try to keep it running. I thought it was going to sit there and idle. I did too. And then whenever it started to die, I was just like, my, I was already brain dead. Oh, this is a little truck. Good grief. All right.
That was me. I'm playing with the choke just right. to see. I'm just trying to help it out just a little bit. Seems like it's going to have to stay choked for a little while. I can't fill up this bowl or something. I think it's going to start pumping pretty quick. The way that thing's just gravity fed down to the pump. It... Yeah, I just don't know. There's because it's, it's up high. I don't oh. know if we've got enough gas in there to get that high yet. Ready? Yeah. Slotted it somewhat. Go ahead. It may not have enough then. I think you like say the, where the drain the, is the, on the, the... It's about midways here, and this thing is leaning this oh, way. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I can... Let's get some more gas. So we're going to go ahead and run to the store and get a little bit more gas. I don't think we've got enough in there to allow it to get down to the fuel pump the way we need it to. Uh, but we've got a runner here, and I'm pretty sure she's going to go up and idle. The next thing will be is figuring out why our coolant line is undone there, and hopefully we can just put it back together and it'll hold uh, coolant for us and let it run long enough to get up to temperature. So we'll get some gas in it, hopefully get that worked out, then move on to the next problem. I don't know if I'll be able to get that hose on there or not, or if it's even going to hold up if I do. That thing is hard as a rock. Ugh. It's right up against it back there on the back side too, isn't it? Yeah, it won't flex nowhere. I wonder how they probably took it off when it was a lot more flexible. Could That's be. That's a little hose too as far as... I wonder if you could take it off at the top, get this off. Get that bottom on and then Maybe. rotate. Maybe so. I'll try it. Rotate from a different direction there. And I don't think, I'm not so certain it's going to hold up, even if I can. Sounds crunchy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I don't know. That's. I can't tell on that middle part there. Oh yeah, it's. I can see Split. my finger. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's see. There was a. Some kind of a flex line, a flex hose maybe. I seen a flex hose the other day. I think yeah. I might know where one's at too. The one right here. I don't know if it'll make the turns and everything, but... That's longer. Right off the bat. Oh, uh, yeah. It might, though. I guess I'm going to try. Hmm. Hose clamps ain't going to be big enough. Hmm. Real on that one, but... This thing's just, it's too long. I could only cut off about three quarters of an inch on each end. I still don't think that's gonna be near what, I mean, that thing needs to be three inches shorter. Well, uh, I guess we'll just look around and see what else we got. If not, we may have to try to hunt one down somewhere because I don't think that's gonna work. So we finally found a hose that we could kind of make work on that bottom radiator hose. Uh, but once we got it installed, we found a little small 3 8 hose that ran off to a shutoff valve that was leaking as well. So once we covered the floor with antifreeze after we found that out, we got that fixed. Uh, we tried our mechanical fuel pump out, but it just does not seem to be pumping for us. So right now, we're just going to go ahead and try to gravity feed this tank that they've got rigged up on the firewall there. Hopefully it's got enough pressure just to run off that. Must be running off of it, huh? I think so. I just, 
There ain't no way there was that yeah, much fuel we put in it. Yeah. Man. Sounds good. I must have got that distributor dead <laughs> on spot. Give it a couple revs. Yeah, sounds pretty good. Yep. I think we can snug that in place. Yep. Uh, we're leaking oil though. Pretty good. I think it's coming out of that. I guess that's the oil filter. Yep. Yeah, I guess that's what that is. Good. Yeah, we got a decent little puddle up underneath here. I think it's coming out. I just yep. seen it drip. It looked like it was dripping a lot more than that. I think we're going to have to take the oil filter off. And... Well, it ain't coming out of the filter itself. It's dry there. It might be coming out of that housing unless there's an oil pressure. I didn't notice there if there happens to be a gauge in there or not. It might be an old line that's come right or like something. A oil sending switch. Yeah, well it's got at least an oil light. It could be that. So we got it cranked up. It's running just off this little gas tank here. We had to bypass the factory fuel pump because it wasn't working. So we've just got a line ran straight to the carburetor and gravity's doing its magic on that. So seems to be revving up pretty good, idling pretty good. May try to give it another little start real quick. I think that distributor is probably right on time where it needs to be. Uh, but we'll see how it fires up real quick here. Yeah, so it fires up and idles. Crazy, we haven't even had to pull off this carburetor to try to clean it up. Not to say that we won't have to, but still pumping out pretty good. Well, I can hear something. Yeah, it's dripping pretty steady, but I just can't. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming out of the top of the, uh, where it bolts into the, the block. I can see it there. All right. So now, yeah, I hear it squirting out a yeah. little bit. I don't We're gonna try out. to figure out why our oil's leaking out here. It's something to do with this oil filter, I believe, on the housing part. Hopefully there's not a crack in it. Maybe it's just a bad gasket. Uh, but get that where it's not leaking. I think our radiator's no longer leaking. So getting pretty close to move on to the clutch to see if we can get it to go in gear. I think that's some old black oil in it. Yeah, we need to change it out. Now that we know it is a runner. I guess this gives us a good reason to, I don't know if that, if it has an actual oil filter in there or what kind of contraptions can be in that case. I know we probably won't be able to find it locally. <laughs> no. Get it? Yep. Can you tell what gasket's gone? Gasket's gone. Hmm. It's a top. Oh, yeah, pretty well everywhere. I think that's why it was leaking there. And it would almost be a good bet. Well, it almost has to be because that's all that's there. I thought there might have been a sensor or something that ran off of right. the block or that somewhere, but probably just Micus one. I think so. We've got some gasket material. We just cl clean that other one up, kind of get us a design. Yeah, I think once we get the gasket fixed on that, bolt it back on, that'll fix our oil leak. Go ahead and grab that stuff and start messing with that. So on the clutch system of this truck, uh, even though it's a 65, we have a hydraulic system here. So this is our brake master cylinder and this is our clutch master cylinder. Uh, inside here, oh, we actually do have some, some fluid inside that one. It doesn't look the greatest. The brakes, yeah, that's dry and crusty there, so. So we may just try to flush out, uh, suck out that old fluid there, put some new fluid in, and see if it'll pump up. Inside the truck here right now, you can pump up the pedal, or try to, but we have 
absolutely no no clutch pedal at all here so it doesn't even try to to pump up you can tell how long this truck's been sitting by that old carpet right there though that just screams the 70s but up underneath here not only do we have our clutch master cylinder the way these hydraulic clutch systems work so up underneath here on the actual transmission we have what they call the clutch slave cylinder there i don't know how well you guys can tell and there's our old hose that runs down there to that so it'll have a bleeder, bleeder valve on this on this slave cylinder right here so we'll try to get that uh, fluid sucked out of it put some new fluid in it and see if dad can bleed it down here and see if we get a clutch pedal does look clean though down there where it goes into it. Got a little towel or something? Uh, something out over there. I like a little shop rag. Shop rag. Well it's bad down in there is what I thought it'd be so we may, we may be in luck. If it'll just pump up a little bit, even if I have to pump it up a couple times between shifts or yeah. something. Yeah, that brake one though. I ain't even gonna try on it. <laughs> Nothing but a bunch of. Oh, it's hard as a rock. Oh, it's coming out in one piece. So we'll try. I wonder if that's the bottom of the... Will that suction thing get hold of it and pull it up? No, it's... That might have been part of the cap, cap too. Yeah. Well, really? I'm going to try to suck it out, too. I don't think it's going to be as bad as what I thought. Looks a lot better than I thought it would. Try it out anyway. I'm sure that old uh, rubber line down there though at the slave cylinder is probably no good in a yeah. little lake. Or, we're taking some in the sprite one. It's mm -hmm. bubbling. Well, clutch one is one bubble. Brake one's taking a lot, though. Sometimes them old brake ones will kind of self-bleed their cells. Or at least the majority of it. Yeah, it's taking, it's a lot of bubbles coming out of it. That'll be huh. our luck. We'll have, that's what I was looking at. I didn't see where it. Yeah, I have brakes, but no clutch. Yeah. I guess switch them around if we had to. <laughs> they yeah. look like they're the same cylinder. I'm going to try to pump it up and see what it does. Yep. Guess I could have left that. You can see if it looks like it's bubbling when I'm pressing it. You're doing the clutch, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it? No. It ain't building up nothing. You're still bubbling. Check the brake one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Took a lot? Yeah. And then it quit. Nope, oh, you're set. We're about to suck down. Down pretty low there. 
Yeah, I think we, it's possible it might build up brakes and not clutch. Okay. Oh, wow, I took a big drink. I'm starting to actually get a brake pedal. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the first time ever that I've felt like we've got some kind of a pedal from just an abandoned right. cylinder. Okay, let me put some more in there. Wait, it's coming back up in. Feeding back the other way? Yep. Let's try on this clutch. We'll come back to the okay. brakes. Gotta have the clutch. Yeah, to we don't do have it. to have the brakes. <laughs> okay, how it works, so. I'm gonna try to blade it. Yeah, let me go ahead. Either that or we can try to suck it through with the little. Surely it'll it'll bleed easy enough this other way. I'm just gonna kind of one thread the cap on there. All right. Just a second. I got a little bit of fluid and a little air. Go again? Just a second, let me get one little, make sure I got it, okay. Well, said I'm wondering if this if this brake master cylinder is good. If a person couldn't switch the lines and just use it for your clutch. Yeah, you could at least try it. And I say maybe we switch out these lines, switch the clutch line over to the brake master cylinder, and at least it might send some pressure down there to the slave cylinder. It could be shot too, right. but yeah. right now that one's not doing anything. Yeah. It's worth a try if it'll work. Say nothing else. You just may have to use. We, we, I'm gonna have to use the brake pedal for, <laughs> for the clutch. clutch. Yeah. <laughs> Which will be a little, little weird, but just know that you don't have a brake. Yeah. Or whichever. As bad as I've trained myself not to hit brake pedals on this old junk we're working on, and so I'll be having to use that to take just put off. your put your right foot on the on the brake. You know, normally you have that on the clutch anyways. Yeah. That didn't come out right either. <laughs> right foot on the clutch. Oh, left. <laughs> uh, I wasn't even, I'm sitting here using my right foot over here, so. Try it out. We can see. Let me see, let me watch, see if any bubbles. So now I've got to use the brake pedal for our clutch. So we pretty much just eliminated this pedal and we have no brakes, but hopefully. I mean, more pedal than the clutch pedal had, but I'm gonna try to see if you can. Okay, let me just go ahead and get it to that line so I can see at least where we were at on it. We have a good mark for a starting point.
All right. Just a second. All right, ready? Let me. And what we got? Lots of fluid out. Yeah. This one's got a lot more working pedal than that other did. Okay. And it's just not moving that clutch at all. All right. Yeah, we. Okay. Plenty of pressure from up above. We're just not doing anything down here. Well, I guess we are going to have to pull that slave cylinder off then. See if there ain't something we can do to clean it up. Maybe it's maybe it's just froze up. Could be. We want to try that. Just get we, it pulled off there. And, I think so. That'd be our easiest. I mean, we're getting a pedal in here. It's building up some pressure, but it's just not moving it down there. If I can get it off and try to work it back and forth, and we may have a working clutch brake pedal <laughs> thing. <laughs> brake clutch. Yeah. So this right here is what they call the clutch slave cylinder. Uh, and how it works, it takes a pressurized fluid coming down from your clutch master cylinder on the firewall. Uh, it pressurizes this up and it'll have a rod that runs to your clutch fork, which will actually engage and disengage on your clutch right there. Uh, right now we have a good pressurized uh, fluid coming down here to this slave cylinder, but we're actually having to use our brake master cylinder, so I'll use the brake pedal for the clutch pedal. But regardless, we're getting a pressure pressurized fluid down here, but inside here, it is just completely rusted up and this little cylinder is not able to move back and forth to work the rod here. So right now we're just going to try to clean this up, tear it apart. Uh, they make rebuild kits for this, but it's, it's hard to say if we're going to be able to get our hands on one. Worst case scenario, we try to find a new one that we can work on there. Uh, all in all, hopefully we can just get this one cleaned up and try to get this truck down the road today. Yeah, we're, we're getting some movement on it now. Is it? If yeah. I was about to say, it feels like I've got a actual pedal. Yeah. You think that's got all the air out of it? I think so, yeah. it's. I mean, it's moving a good inch and a half or so on the... I'm going to try it in gear, see if it disengages. Okay. You out of the way? <laughs> yeah, I'm out of the way. Yeah, may have to... No. Oh, there it went. Yeah, it wasn't at first, but it is now. Cool. <laughs> cool. They probably had a little rust on that. That plate? Yeah. Yep. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's real good. So we finally got a working clutch on this thing. We're actually having to use the brake master cylinder to do it, so I have to hit the brake pedal to make the clutch work. Uh, but the goal was to drive this truck, so we don't necessarily need brakes. I've got a handbrake I could possibly use if it works, but we do have a working clutch now. It was a little stuck, the clutch uh, plate was a little stuck on the flywheel at first, but now it's engaging, disengaging the way it needs to. The only last thing other than changing the oil is I don't know if you guys can tell, but this truck has a terrible lean to it to the driver's side. So we're gonna jack it up, get up underneath there, see what the problem might be on that. Hopefully we can fix it. If not, we may just send her on down the road like she is. I think this thing has like a torsion bar suspension up front here, so. Oh yeah. It won't have no springs or cool springs anyways. Something's definitely Wrong on this side, though, that's for sure. Yeah, I kind of went behind that cross member there. Okay. Oops. Missed it. I don't know what it, what it hung on. Oh, yeah, I hit the cross member there. Okay. You're good now. So yeah, definitely has a torsion bar front end. These bars run back to some torsion keys here. And the way it works is they're actually twisted under pressure and that's what makes this have a suspension. So that side seems fine. So that right there, 
I don't know if you guys can see that there is going to be our torsion key has one on this side and that side by dad's hand there. This side's missing a bolt, ain't it? Yeah, you can see that the, how far this is down at the bottom. That one's almost all the way at the top. Right. On the, the stock so it needs a bolt to to pull this down, which would twist this yeah. uh, twist this arm to, to allow it. that wheel to be lifted there. So maybe the bolt just vibrated loose or something. It could have. Now that's what I was afraid of. It's broke off in there. That bolt is broke off inside that torsion key. It's got to be drilled out then, ain't it? Yep. Well, that won't be fun. No, it won't. Well, what has been so far. Right. So we found out why our suspension is not working right on this side. On the, on the torsion key, it has a bolt that allow that torsion bar to twist. Maybe they hit a heck of a bump one time. Maybe it's the same bump that took this rocker out uh, and it broke off that bolt in the torsion key. So unfortunately, we'll either have to try to get that key off to drill that out or maybe see if we can kind of drill it in place right there and find a new bolt. So uh, we'll just see if we can get that out. If not, like I said, we'll just try to send her on down the road like she is today and come back to it later. So we were able to go ahead and get the bolt out of the torsion key, uh, had to drill it out, get a new bolt put back up in there. It was a pretty good pain, but we got this truck set in a lot more level now. Uh, we went ahead and changed the oil in it as well, so we've got some fresh oil that we're going to run through this motor. Uh, we were messing around with the fuse box, little fuse panel thing right there, and they were just a little bit corroded up. So now we do have a working ignition switch at least. So hit the key. She purrs like a kitten, so it's running great on that. We're still just gravity feeding off this little tank right here. Uh, I'm going to get inside here to try to see if it'll actually shift into the gears, uh, make sure all of our transmission gears are working right, and then we're getting pretty close to trying to drive it down the road. Oops. Out of habit, press the clutch pedal, and I have to press Pushed the brake clutch, pedal. didn't you? Yeah, I accidentally pressed the wrong yeah. pedal. <laughs> we got it. It ain't going to mess the paint job up. Here we go. Yep. First gear. Second gear. I'm assuming this is a four speed, so reverse. Cool. We have a working transmission and a working clutch brake pedal thing. <laughs> we have forward and rewind. Yeah. So there's really only one last thing me and Dad want to try when we were looking around on this truck. Dad come across this bar, which we supposed was to let down the spare tire, and it is, uh, but he noticed that you can even crank this thing with the bar. So we've never tried that before. We don't know if this thing's gonna fire up, but it fires up so easy with the key, we thought we'd give it a go and see what it does. So you wanna do the honors? Yeah, I'm <laughs> counting my teeth right now, make sure. I'm... I have to turn the key to the on at least so it has fire to the cool. I would say you need a light. No, I got it. Here we go. I mean, well, I mean, we'll get a feel of it first here. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> get my key back out. And just like that, she's purring like a kitten again. So I'd say that's a first I've never. Yeah, first time I've ever cranked one like that. <laughs> well. A lot easier than I thought it would be. I know it. This thing runs really good. Let's see if we can make it down to the other shop. Hoping the window would go down. I have to re-stab to get out of here.
clutch is actually working great. <laughs> I ain't tried the handbrake, but I'm about to see if we got anything working on that. Got some of our nicer ve vehicles in the way. <laughs> I still can't get over how well and smooth this thing's running. Without even having to mess with that carburetor. As far as we know, the water pump's working. Got all of our coolant hose lines fixed. So no leaks there. Looks like it's about to rain, and I do not think I have any working wipers, for sure. Second gear. Oh yeah. Third gear. Kind of funny, we've literally rigged, <laughs> had to rig, most of the stuff on this little truck to make it down here to the shop, but oh, no brakes. The handbrake ain't working. Slow down, girl. Slow down. <laughs> we made it. Here. Well guys, I think it's safe to say we can mark this old girl off as another successful run. When we found this old Dotson pickup, she'd been setting up for quite some time now. As we dug into it, we found a few issues we were able to fix, including a broke distributor we had to try to glue back together. Once we got the engine turning over, getting a little fire, getting a little gas, she fired up and ran pretty good. Overall, I have to say I'm pretty happy with the success we've made on this old girl today. Now me and dad will come back later and work out all the kinks the correct way. Our goal was basically just to get this truck to run and drive under its own power in a day. So I have to say we were successful in that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell, and we'll see you on the next one.